Hello and welcome to the Art Market Podcast. Hi, I'm here with co-founder of the Art Market and sculptor Brendan Hesmondholsch. Hello, Brendan. Hi, Fiona. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Have you been busy working hard? I have. I've been getting work ready for an exhibition in Leeds and in Birmingham. For our listeners, can you tell us a little bit about what your background is? I trained in uh, ceramics at Edinburgh College of Art. Seems a long time ago now. I always sort of say that I've only been doing the um, job for about 10 years, but it's actually nearly 13. So I'm trying to keep myself younger, I think. (laughs) Um, But I trained in ceramics. I did a degree there and left the university in 97, I think now. And so since then I've been self-employed, set up a studio here in uh, Home Firth in West Yorkshire, Mm -hmm. probably about seven years ago. So yeah, it's been a busy time. It seems to sort of fly by. Can you explain the the process of what you do? Yeah, I mean, most of the work that I produce is sort of sculptural pieces. I suppose the best way to describe it is sort of very easy on the eye. They're all sort of based around sort of animals and sort of natural forms, really. They kind of are what they are. The sculptures sort of created using sort of large sort of slabs of clay manipulated from sort of the inside and the pieces are working very much about the materials I use it's very much about textures and marks I try to keep them very much about the clay the freshness in the clay mm-hmm. clay is kind of the, the I suppose the chosen material I do use others but predominantly the clay is what I sculpt in I use the sort of animals as a subject to sort of express the material the subjects of animals are obviously important certain ones I've better characters than others so I do sort of manipulate certain subjects at the minute we seem to be sort of looking at the bull as a subject and sort of trying to get the energy of that piece into the clay and vice versa the sort of energy of the clay into the bull so it's uh, it's, it's an interesting material it's something I've used sometimes I'll find them as one-off stoneware pieces and um, others that I'll cast into bronze and it depends on sort of customer base and the exhibition that I'm working for really. Do you prefer to work on a large or a small scale? The scales have sort of varied really. I mean, when I first sort of left college, I was very much making pieces that were aimed at sort of exhibiting in galleries. So they were always of a manageable size. As time's gone on, I've played around with scales and different pieces. I've learned a lot more about sort of casting and mould making, which has allowed me to produce pieces on a lot larger scale. I always aspired to apply for the public art commissions and wondered how as a sort of ceramic artist I would tackle producing something on such a large scale in a public environment and making it sort of, you know, I suppose vandal-proof and everything else. Whereas going through the mould-making and casting process allowed me to produce pieces in bronze and sort of cast iron, which allows me access to applying for those commissions, as well as producing the work, smaller scale pieces for the gallery um, sector. So I quite like both. I mean, the gallery sector for me is very much my living. I mean, last year, I, I... I produced, well, it was probably the year before now, a large piece for the National Health Service, which was my biggest piece to date, which was probably about 17 foot high. And to be able to produce that from a bag of clay was quite exciting for me as a maker because I always always thought I was limited to making pieces just for galleries. So to be able to sort of access a different avenue for my work was quite appealing. And it's something that I I manipulate now and I, I know that I can tackle public art pieces, whether it be bronze or not, but in the same making method that I used for the miniature pieces. So it's, it's really wide in what I can produce as a sort of artist and the work and the projects I can tackle. Do they give you the ideas or do they kind of give you a brief and then you work towards the brief? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the particular piece for the, the National Health Service, the, the brief was very straightforward and simple. It was just called Flight. It was a one-word brief, which is quite unusual. More, more often than not, the briefs are a lot more detailed than that. But that, for me, was quite, quite nice because I could really sort of use my imagination and kind of run wild, really, with what I wanted to produce. I was, dare I say, allowed to make a piece of work of my own rather than being too brief-led. Quite often public art commissions can be historical-based and you end up as a maker making something that might not necessarily be what you you do as an artist, really. Um, Mm. So to have an open brief is is fantastic. Are you looking forward to doing the art market? Yeah, no, I'm always always looking forward to doing the art market. I, I tend to sort of find quite often that I'm sort of running around trying to sort of help organise the event sometimes where I know I should be making my own work for the event but hopefully it'll be a little more organised for this one. But no, it's, it should be an exciting time. I've got some new pieces of work on show this time. I'm also looking forward to some of the new makers and artists we've got showing this time. We've got Cuthbert Noble who's one of our youngest exhibitors to date and he's just started his degree course actually at Central St Martin's College. So I've put him under a little bit of pressure doing his first sort of selling show and exhibition with us. I'm confident he'll, he'll, he'll put on a good show for us. He's a very talented uh, portrait artist, so 
he'll be he'll be exciting to see and I think he's a, as a fresh faced newcomer he'll be one to watch out for. I've got a, a print maker, Claire Caulfield from the West Yorkshire Print Studios. I really love her work, so I'll be I'll be first I think to her space. If I can afford I'll be uh, trying to sort of purchase a piece for myself that. So I hope she brings some sort of uh, wonderful work for the show. So yeah, no, it's, it's, it should be an exciting event again. Hopefully we'll be as busy as we are in the summer. And when are you doing the art market? I'm exhibited on the 14th. That allows me a little bit more time to make some more work in between now and then. On the 7th, I'll be there as a presence to sort of help. So I'll be there both weekends. When did you set up the Sculptural Lounge? The Sculptural Lounge was set up, and certainly the studios were set up about six years ago now. We run out of an old textile mill. Um, in the centre of Home Firth. And we have two parts of the workshop. We have the old labs, the dye rooms, and the main workshop area. And there's several artists here now. Predominantly it's um, sculptural work, it's ceramics. And 3D is the sort of the main focus, although there's not necessarily a bias towards that, it's just the way it's sort of happened really. And I've always, I mean, I used to have a studio at home on my on my own. I still have a very, a very glamorous workshop at home, which I could move to, but it's I think <laughs> it's working in solitary confinement is, isn't for me. Mm. So to sort of Work in, uh, dare I say, a group workshop is definitely what I enjoy. It's very good to have feedback off each other, whether it be negative or constructive criticism. It's always healthy to have other, other artists and makers around you. Um, and we do, we kind of sort of buzz off each other in a way, and whether it be sort of helping each other at exhibitions and shows. And I've been a strong believer as a, as a group of artists together, we have a, a stronger skill set, and it's allowed us to tackle projects certainly within the Kirklees area, that we wouldn't normally tackle as individuals. We have a design section to the Sculpture Challenge SL Design, which is kind of a sister company, which we do design work for our local council, and we've done a lot of design work for a local heritage garden over the last three years, which hopefully will come to fruition quite soon. So as a group, it allows us that sort of freedom to sort of, sort of pool our resources and uh, take on different avenues rather than just our individual artwork as well. I mean, the Sculpture Lounge, we, we have an education side to the business as well, where we run approximately sort of four to five workshops a year for private individuals to come and learn sort of sculpting skills, predominantly um, working with clay, although last year we run um, a wax course and sort of welding course as well. Um, most of these courses are aimed at people with some basic knowledge of sculpture, certainly with using clay as a material. We don't necessarily at present run a beginner's course, although... There is quite a demand for it at the minute, so it's something we'll be looking into for 2011. So the courses tend to be sort of three days, four days or five day courses. They're quite intensive. I'm a strong believer in uh, people come on the courses, they need to sort of go away with hopefully some more sort of self-confidence and use the materials so they feel inspired to go back into their own workshops and actually produce something in the technique we, we use here. Um, it is very much technique based. You know, most people do produce a sort of accomplished, finished piece of work at the end of it, but that's not the the sort of be all and end all really it's about picking up some new skills and feeling sort of inspired like I say to go and use those um, and we you know we I think we had one of our people in the course was Cliff Wright the illustrator last year and obviously fantastic illustrator but he came on the course and he's now sculpting some of his figures from his books in three dimensions now so it's quite it's quite good we have other artists that will do the courses so it's just another string to the bow we were you know there's avenues as a maker where you know, the, the art world isn't all doom and gloom. There's lots of avenues to sort of um, really make a good living for yourself. I suppose the students inspire you as well, don't they? Ab absolutely. They, they bring something that you haven't seen before. Yes, absolutely. And the last questions that maybe other people will ask as well. So it does, you know, sometimes in your own workshop, working sort of, you know, on a daily basis, you kind of stop thinking. You become almost like a machine. You're working and working and working from one exhibition to the next. Mm -hmm. And it's nice just to sort of slow yourself down and actually think about the processes and the whys and the why nots. And, it, it, you know, it, it's healthy. And it, part of the doing, you know, running the course is for that reason and probably that reason alone. Where can we buy your work? Um, most of the work is sort of private commission, private sales. So you can buy the work direct from the Sculpture Lounge in Home Firth. There's a, there is a website link and I'll be happy to discuss any, obviously, commissions. We've also got the art market, of course on the 7th and 14th, and I'm exhibiting the 7th and 14th, so we can always buy through the art markets. Have you any exciting news, shows or exhibitions coming up? We've just completed, actually, quite a successful um, show of work in Sotheby's uh, via um, Summer Place Auctions, and um, that was a really good selling event for us. Quite an eye-opener, really, to sort of see what the work can actually sale-wise produce in, in a sale in a different environment from where I normally would sell a piece of work. So. That's been really exciting, something that we're going to look into, you know, really sort of making moves to sort of push for next year in May. 
hopefully we'll put him work in a, in a, in a sale room in May with some of his as well. I've got a couple of group exhibitions which the work goes out this week and one's in sort of Leeds City Centre at the Leeds uh, Design and Craft Gallery and also I've got some work going to the gallery upstairs in Henley and Arden. Group exhibitions, two galleries that I've always exhibited with on a regular basis over the last sort of 10 years really. What inspires you? Well, I use obviously animals as a source of, sort of inspiration predominantly. I, it's kind of something that I've always sort of played around with since I started making as an artist. I mean, even as early as sort of doing A-level ceramics, it was animals were the sort of chosen subject. I suppose other artists would be one of the sort of main things. I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of Elizabeth Frink and um, Nicola Hicks. I love the, the movement and the expression that Nicola Hicks produces in some of her pieces. Uh, very simple marks, but you know, very expressive and saying a lot. And that's kind of really where, as an artist, I, I, I suppose that's what I'm trying to aspire to in a way, uh, producing the movement and the character and the essence of my subjects, rather than being about the sort of the perfect anatomy. So it is about the character and movement. And sometimes I achieve that. And sometimes, you know, as a maker, you sort of look at the work and think, no, it's not quite right. As an artist, I think you're your own biggest critic or maybe you possibly should be. Um, I think if, you, if you're an artist that thinks you've cracked it and you've done it, I think it's time to get a new job. I think should be always room for sort of improvement and, and that sort of aspiration to sort of improve and increase. And there's always new new things to make and new things to do. So yeah, it's, it's definitely other artists that inspire me and looking at other artists' work. And I think we're all inspired by each other really. What do you love most about what you do? I think the, the, the main thing is, you know, I, I suppose, I, I mean, I went to art college almost by mistake. At 17 years old, I didn't even know what an art college was. I mean, I did A-levels in law, sociology, and I did A-level ceramics because I knew it's something I enjoyed. It was almost like a, dare I say, an easy A-level. But it turned out that I was kind of directed to go to art college via a very good A-level tutor. Uh, my ceramics tutor, my, my law teacher, sat down and pushed me in this sort of art college route, which for me was, I suppose I'm very thankful for it because I wouldn't have gone to art college. So I wouldn't be doing what I do now. And I do have um, an amazing amount of freedom with the job. One, being self-employed gives me the flexibility to, I suppose, do what I like. And two, the, the, the job, I'm, I feel very privileged to do what I do as a job and make it work for me as, as an artist. I mean, I had to be commercial about what I did. I had to make sure that I made a living from what I, what I produced. If I didn't think in those terms, I would have had to go and get, a, a, dare I say, a full-time job or a different job. And the art would have been, been very much secondary. Um, so literally when I was going through the art college process, I, I was producing work that I, I knew I had to come out into a sort of marketplace and sell. I think now as I've got older, there's more of a freedom to be able to produce pieces very much sort of with an art base and a, a thought process in. And I don't necessarily have to worry about every piece selling now. I've got myself into a position where there is that freedom to make pieces that I really enjoy rather than thinking I've got to make 30 pieces this month, 30 pieces next month just to sort of hit that sort of salary or that target sort of salary. But don't get me wrong, I'm a strong believer in that all artists' salaries should go up each year like everybody else's. I think, you know, there's a good living to be made in the art world. What is next for your company? Next year, I mean, I focus this year, the rest of this year is going to be um, finishing sort of commissions and orders. We're kind of sort of almost fully booked now and sort of until coming on February. So next year, the main focus is I, I'll be putting in a piece to Wildlife Artists of the Year for the first time. And I've always kind of turned away from um, competitions, really, but for some reason I've been drawn to this for the first time. And I, I want to make a sort of special effort to, you know, if I'm going to do it, I'd like to try and win it. So that's, that's something that'll be exciting for me to try. I'm also awaiting the results of an application for Chelsea Flower Show, which will be in May. And if we're successful there, then we'll be showing a sort of collection of bronze pieces there in May. But obviously that's pending, so fingers crossed for that one. We're hopeful to be at Art in Action at Waterbury Gardens as the Sculpture Lounge in uh, summer as well of next year, which will be quite an exciting event if we get secured a place. Um, there's talk of myself and David doing a sort of sculpt off over the five days and producing some large scale pieces, which hopefully will be interesting for the audience to see something being created at the show and see how far we actually managed to get in five days. So it'll be quite interesting for me and Dave as well because it's something we've never done before. So a bit of fun as well. Uh, and now apart from that, we've got the art market in the summer to focus on and I'll definitely be at that with uh, some new collections of work as well. Lovely. It's been great talking to you, Brendan, and I'll see you at the art market. Thank you. If you'd like to know more about the art markets, go to www.artmarkets.co.uk.